How many nuts could a nuthatch hatch if a nuthatch could hatch nuts? The answer to this question is pretty obvious. A nuthatch would obviously hatch all the nuts it were capable of hatching, assuming, of course, a nuthatch were capable of hatching nuts. But what is that exact figure? In order to figure that out, we need to do some investigation. So first things first, we're not going to worry about the actual mechanism by which these nuts are being hatched. After all, we're operating under the assumption that nut hatches can hatch nuts anyway. We know the mechanism by which most eggs are hatched, or rather incubated, and that's usually by provision of heat. In order to give them that heat, a bird will incubate eggs by pressing a brood patch into them. That's an area of the chest that becomes bare and very heavily vascularized, allowing for extremely efficient heat transfer. For the most part, female birds will develop brood patches, but in some species and groups, groups, the males will share in incubation duties and also develop a full or partial brood patch. The heat transfer from this brood patch raises the temperature of the eggs to a balmy 37 degrees, which is about the temperature at which the embryo will develop. As long as it's kept at that temperature, development inside the egg will continue. The limiting factor for how many eggs a bird can incubate is typically the ratio between brood patch and egg surface area. In terms of figuring out the actual number, we can address that mathematically easily enough. It's really just a question of surface area ratios. The only issue is actually calculating that and figuring out what that ratio is. Luckily, we were able to get some cross-sectional chest measurements off the nuthatch that we captured, and Birds of the World very handily has a detailed breakdown both on average clutch size and the dimensions of those said eggs. After running the calculations, we have some numbers. The surface area of a nuthatch egg is about 766 square millimeters, and the available area of the brood patch is about 830. From Birds of the World, we also know that nuthatches have an average clutch size of about 6.2. So all we need to do is divide all those numbers into each other, and we find that only about 17% of an egg's surface area actually needs to be in contact with a brood patch in order to ensure incubation. So now it's just a matter of applying that 17% figure to various nuts. The very first thing I thought of was a hazelnut. I'm going to be using the measurements of a hazelnut with the shell still on because, well, I mean, bird eggs have shells. In order to hatch, a chick has to come out of the shell, so a nut has to also come out of the shell in order to be hatched, so it's going to be bigger than a normal hazelnut, is what I'm saying. It took some digging through agricultural databases, but I found that hazelnut cobs measure about 15 to 25 millimeters in length and about 10 to 15 millimeters in width, giving us a median surface area of about 655 square millimeters. And we're almost there, we just need to divide the available chest area by the surface area of the nut and multiply that by the percentage that actually needs to be in contact, and there's our answer. About seven nuts rounded down. That, hmm. After all that, it seems almost a little bit anticlimactic. But there we go, I guess. But who says we should stop there? After all, we I've done all this groundwork already. Like, I have my model right here. I have most of my numbers figured out. There's no reason I can't do this for anything else I want. So let's just run this calculation again for, say, peanuts. And then maybe almonds. And th then... Th Walnuts, why not? That one might be a little bit ambitious. And while I'm at it, all of these are pretty exotic nuts from tropical locations. White-breasted nuthatches are a resident bird that doesn't tend to migrate or see anything beyond this climate. So let's also run that calculation for something that's a bit more familiar for them, like the acorns of a red oak. And at this point, I think I've gone far enough. We get the point. We have as many answers to as many different interpretations as we want. The question has been answered. You're welcome. <laughs>